Well, hey there, art stars. Today we're going to make a phoenix feather. And when you're done, it's going to look something like it is. And I've got a couple different ways to paint it on here, and I'll show you how to do that step by step. Let's go to the drawing board and make some magic. Okay gang, you're going to need a piece of wire for this project, about a foot long. You can cut a piece off an old hanger, or this is sculpting wire that I have, and roughly 12 inches is good. You also need some masking tape, or scotch tape will work too. A pair of scissors, because you got to cut stuff. Mm, some Elmer's glue, or crafty glue, and a fat round paintbrush. Cool. All right, now, you can draw the blanks for your feathers. I happen to have this copy sheet from a project I did with school kids, but you can freehand yours, and then you can cut it out and make a pattern out of the first one you cut out and just trace it again on a piece of paper so you have two equal feathers. Nice. All right, now you're gonna take your wire and you're gonna kind of smooth it out and make it as straight as you can for this part. Grab some masking tape, just a nice size piece, about six inches to start. And you're gonna put it on the wire about three inches up from the bottom at an angle. So see how mine is kind of slanting down? And then you're just gonna start wrapping it. And you just wanna wrap it as nice and tight to the wire as you can, and just keep twisting the wire, and the tape will beat itself on. And you're gonna do that all the way to the bottom of the wire. And then just twist it up nice and tight around there and you got what's going to be the quill part of your feather when you get that far we're just going to take our feathers that you either drew or made somehow and you're going to cut both of them out now the first one when you cut it out you're going to cut inside the lines that you drew you don't want to see your pencil lines or your marker lines and i'm just kind of cutting this off in some big chunks here just a little scissors tip for you. If you cut off chunks as you go, then the rest of the paper doesn't get in your way. But take your time with this part because you want to use the first feather you cut out as a pattern to match up your second feather, especially if you draw it yourself. So you really only need to draw it once, cut it out, and then trace it again, and you'll have two equal feathers. Bingo! I have some little cutouts that I'm cutting right now. And those make the little separations in the feathers and it makes nice, um, neat little notches in your feather. It makes it look, you know, look more feather-like. Nice! Once you get both feathers cut out, you're gonna line them up together and slide them together as best you can because you wanna see how much they match up. If they look pretty close, that's great. Don't worry if they're a little off right now, if one's a little bit bigger than the other, we'll trim that up in a little bit. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a few pieces of masking tape and we're gonna take your wire and the end that doesn't have the masking tape on it goes toward the top of your feather. And you're just gonna tape it in place, like right in the center of the feather and burnish that tape down real good so that it stays in place. Next, we're gonna bend our wire a little bit and put another piece of tape on it at the bottom and make sure at this point that the masking tape that you wrapped around your quill is up inside the feather. We don't wanna see a silver gap there between the wire and the masking tape on your quill. And then you can just bend out your wire a little bit the way that you want it to kind of follow along your feather and tape it in place in the middle as well. Once you have that, then you've got your feather ready to go. And now we're going to put it onto something that you can get a little bit messy with because we're going to glue the two halves together. So Elmer's glue, craft glue, any kind of, even a glue stick if you put it on heavy enough will work. But what I'm doing right here is I'm just putting the tip of the glue on the feather, literally touching the tip to the feather. And I'm squirting out a little bit of glue on there. And some people call that scribbling with glue. Some people call it drawing with glue but you just wanna get a nice little coat over everything, and especially the edges, because when you glue this together, you want those edges to stay together and not to keep popping apart. Now, once the glue is on, I'm just taking my finger, and I'm smearing that glue and thinning it out, and I'm making sure to cover everything, even the wire 
but especially all the parts of the feather, especially, I said especially twice, especially the edges of the feather, because like I said before, you want those to seal up the feather so that when we're done, it looks like one feather, not two pieces of paper that are you know, coming apart at the seams. Once you get that done, wipe the glue off your fingers so you don't make a mess on everything. And then we're gonna get the other half of our feather and you're gonna start at the bottom and you're gonna line it up as carefully as you can with the other section of your feather. Okay, take your time on this step, make it look good, line everything up the best you can, and then you're just gonna start pressing it together all up and down the feather. Then once everything kind of starts to stick a little bit, you're just gonna work your way up and down the feather, pressing the air out of it and making sure that all those seams attach, you know, they start to get sticky. Okay. Then you can put it down and kind of from the inside of the feather out, you're gonna start pressing down and smoothing up. That is going to force any air bubbles out of your feather it's gonna make the paper stick, especially closer to where the wire is, so that it looks like a real feather when you get both halves put together. Just like that. Now I can see, flip it over here on the other side, and I'm gonna do the same thing, and that'll make the back side look neat too. So that no matter which way you're looking at the feather, it looks cool. What do you think? Yeah, thanks. I think it looks pretty cool. All right, we're gonna let that dry and it will come back and we'll paint it. Okay, everybody, now that we've got this done and the glue has dried, you wanna take a closer look at it. I'm not sure if you can see this very well, but if you look and see, there may be some parts that don't perfectly match up. And if you want them to match up before you go to the painting step, we're just gonna take a pair of scissors and wherever you see anything, we're just gonna trim it up. All right, once you get all that trimming up done, and for the million of you that have just scrolled ahead and skipped this part all together, <laughs> we're going to add some paint and really make this feather pop. And to do that, you only need two paints. You need a yellow, and this is crocus yellow. And I'm gonna shake it up, make sure it's all good. And it doesn't matter what you have as long as it's nice and bright. And I'm just going to bring my feather down here. And I'm gonna put a little bit right on my board because this is my painter's board and it's not gonna hurt anything to have it on there. If you have a palette or a paper plate, something like that, you can do that with yours. And then I also have, this is called Santa Red and it's acrylic also. You can get this at the craft store, Hobby Lobby or Michael's, anywhere that sells art supplies. But whatever you have will be fine. But you want a nice bright, red let me move my mr brad mug there out of the way and i'm going to put these right beside each other and the cool thing about this is um we don't have to mix any paint okay we're going to mix the paint right on the feather together what and if you take a look at the brush i have here i got my nice fat brush i'm just going to kind of round a tip like that if you don't have a brush exactly like this just get as close as you can you can even use a piece of um, a sea sponge if you're a watercolor artist and you know you do any kind of painting with watercolor or whatever you got you can use but there's a certain way we're going to hold the brush what I want you to do is when you're painting is we're gonna hold it straight up and down like this and we're gonna use a tapping motion okay, tap 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 you can practice that a little bit if you want and we're gonna start with yellow and we're just gonna get a little bit of yellow just on the tip of the brush look at this and then we're gonna start in the middle. And we're just gonna kind of tap, tap, tap all the way down. Oop, I got a little bit of glue in there. That's not gonna hurt anything. We're gonna keep going down the middle and just see kind of how I'm tapping it around. It's not a perfect line. It's kind of blotchy, blotchy. Let me get some up here. And with acrylics, it's always good to start with the lightest color first and go to dark. So we're just gonna keep going right down the center of the spine here. If you want to, you can even paint your little um, stem here. You can paint that yellow, but I'd like it just like it is. So get a little more yellow here. 
and you're going to vary the patterning a little bit. Some of it coming out, some of it staying straight in. It's up to you. It's your phoenix feather. And now this is going to sound crazy. Even if it doesn't sound crazy, what we're going to do is we're going to take red and we're not even going to clean our brush. We're just going to add red straight to the yellow. No, that's the crazy part. And we're going to start down here on the end. We're just going to start at a tip and we're just going to start tap, tap, tapping that red. Now I can go off my feather because I got this board here. So be careful if you don't, you know, at least have a couple paper towels under there or something so that, um, you don't get paint all over your parents' good table or over your husband's workbench or whatever it is. And now I'm just gonna go back in and I'm gonna start mixing yellow and red in different places. And guess what color that makes if you mix yellow and red? Yes, it is. It's orange. Eureka! Right. And that's what we want. We want red, yellow, and orange. Now, how blotchy and how blendy and how this comes out in the end is 100% up to you. Now, that dry brush will help blend everything together as you continue to tap it. So, check this out. I hope you can tell this. There, see how that's starting to blend in together now? And the more you do that, and the drier you keep your brush, the cooler that's gonna look. So what you can do is you just can, you know, you're just kind of experimenting and getting a feel for how this is. Maybe you want a little bit at the tip there. Maybe a little more yellow, because I want that to be orange. Right. And you can just keep working in between the yellow and the red to get what you want. All right, guys, I think I'm pretty happy with mine. So I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit. And then I'll meet you at the very end and we'll see how yours came out. Well, here it is, our Phoenix feather. How'd yours come out? I hope you enjoyed this project. Now check out this video where the Sorting Hat himself stops by to draw along with me in the studio. And um, things don't go quite as planned. Until next time, God bless.